This is the Black Information Network Daily Podcast, and I am your host, Ramses Ja. And sometimes the amount of stories that make their way to us means that we simply can't cover everything that comes our way. But from time to time, a story just stays with me, and I feel compelled to share it with you and give you my thoughts. And now, one more thing. You're like me and you pay attention to the political goings on in this country. You recognize that there is a higher degree of political apathy coming from the more liberal side of the aisle in this country. This has a lot to do, of course, with the current administration, uh, their lack of messaging, their lack of exciting and uh, novel accomplishments. And really, in our community, it's due to a lack of keeping the promises that got them elected in the first place. Uh, remember the, the climate of the country in 2020 and all the goings on. And while we're now on the other side of the midpoint of Biden's administration, when we take inventory of, you know, where we stand, the truth of the matter is that President Biden, for better or worse, has been the president. You know, things have moved along, things have gotten, things have improved since he was elected, and he's done the job. I, you know, credit where it's due. Um, but there's a lot of people these days who look at Biden's age, of course. Um, A lot of people who look at how he's handled the situation in Palestine and how he has, you know, dropped the ball on, you know, police reform and student loans and uh, voting rights protections and on and on and on and say, you know, Juneteenth wasn't what we asked for. And so some people, when they reconcile everything, a good number of people, um, especially on the heels of this conflict in uh, Palestine, reconcile everything against their own moral compass. A lot of these folks are saying things like, you know what? I can't in good conscience vote for another Biden administration. And I can't vote for a another (laughs) Trump administration. And these people who can think this critically know full well that they're casting a vote for a third party candidate is effectively casting a vote for Donald Trump because they're throwing away what would otherwise be a vote for Democrats. And I understand that frustration. I promise I understand that frustration. You know, I've had Jewish people on the show to give us some perspective on what's going on in Palestine. I've had Palestinian people on the show to discuss what's going on over there. I myself have student loans. I am a big fan of reforming the police and, you know, protecting voting rights and and all the things, yes. And so I recognize how a person can feel very disconnected from this administration and indeed could feel like an investment of a vote in this administration is an investment of a vote in genocide. But today I came across something that I want to share with you that I think explains exactly what happens when we don't vote. Okay, I I recognize and respect that it is a lesser of two evils for a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is that we've lessered of the two evils our way out of every tight situation that we've been in before as a people in this country. Prior to, you know, the, the opportunity to vote for Obama, I can't say that there was ever really a candidate that people loved. And even there were some people that didn't love Obama who were black and voted for him. 
because he was black or because he was, again, the lesser of two evils. There's very many. There's a lot of people who really want nothing to do with politics because on either side of the aisle, it doesn't represent the interest of the people that it affects. Right. No, these are all fair criticisms. But the point is, again, we've lessered of the two evils our way throughout the entirety of our time in this country since we've been able to vote. And I think that that still holds true. So I implore you to continue to do so. And I think that this example um, helps me to make that point. This comes from the Grio. A GOP lawmaker introduces a measure that would make it easier for someone accused of homophobia, transphobia, sexism, or racism to bring a defamation action. A bill introduced by a Florida lawmaker could make it easier for anyone who's the target of a racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic allegation to bring up a defamation claim. On Friday, a Republican lawmaker, Jason Brodeur, introduced a measure stating that, quote, an allegation that the plaintiff has discriminated against another person or group because of their race, sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity constitutes defamation per se, unquote. This is according to the New Republic. Um, also, according to them, statements published in print, on television, or on social media are included in the bill, which also states that an individual recorded in a widely shared video allegedly participating in discriminatory acts is not a public figure, providing additional legal grounds for litigation. That means all those uh, cell phone cameras documenting Karen behavior or Kevin behavior, if it's a man, all of that stuff would fall under this bill. And the person who records it and uploads it could be sued for defamation of character. Right? Right. Defendants facing defamation charges can't cite the plaintiff's scientific or religious convictions as a means of defense in circumstances involving allegations of homophobia or transphobia. Wow. And then it goes on to say a defendant found liable could face a fine of $35,000 or more. Uh, the measure also eliminates several journalistic rights, most notably the ability to keep sources confidential. Claims made by unidentified sources are presumptively false, leaving media covering discrimination open to legal action. OK, so what we have is an elected official who's crafted a law. That it, as we've seen, is not impossible, would be. Um, implemented. You know, right now it's a bill, but it could be implemented. And this is the result of voting. Now, I, I recognize and respect that this is not the president doing this. This is a local election. But what I think it illustrates is just how far a vote or lack thereof can go. Because if this is passed, again, we cannot, at least in the state of Florida, even record the behavior that someone who is being racist against us in that moment without facing backlash. Make no mistake, this law is created to only protect one group of people who need no protection. They themselves are the ones causing the damage. They're the ones, they're the ones who are challenging our affirmations. Indeed, now they're challenging our right to affirm <laughs> that our lives matter. And they were duly elected and they are doing their jobs representing their the, the electors, not the population, the people who elected them. And I think that that's what we end up with under another Trump presidency. He's told, he's told us time and again exactly who he is, exactly what he wants to do. And I know that you remember waking up every day under a Trump presidency thinking, oh my God, what did this guy do today? For four years, that was your reality. Oh, how soon we forget. Well, I didn't forget. It was scary to watch that whole presidency unfold around the world, 
people mocked him and by extension us, made a fool out of us. And that very realistically could happen again. And it could be even worse this time because you can only run twice. So a second Trump presidency, good for all intents and purposes, be him no holds barred, all the way turned up. And I know once upon a time, I made a case for Joe Biden. Um, I know that once upon a time, I cited his accomplishments, which there weren't, there weren't none. There's, you know, I can't, I can't say that. Um, and I know that right now it is extremely difficult for me to make a conversation or, or for me to make an argument rather for a second Joe Biden term especially now that 30,000 human beings have been eradicated from the face of the earth with his full support in the nation state of Palestine. Um, that would feel very unfair and very unkind to my Palestinian brothers and sisters for me to have a full-throated endorsement of Joe Biden. What I can say is that that lesser of two evils argument rings truer now than ever before. And so a vote against Donald Trump, a vote against a Trump presidency, still feels like a task that I will need to reconcile. And I'm imploring you to do the same because what's happening in Florida could very easily happen around the country underneath another pre Trump presidency where we lose rights to film and share what's happening to us, where we lose rights to complain about what's going on, where more rights for the people who are already protected are implemented in your day-to-day -day lives. I never would have thought I'd have seen the day. But here it is right in front of me from the griot. And make no mistake, they're pushing for this. This is what the Republicans are doing. They're, they're protecting the people who are voting for them. And the people who are voting for them live in fear of having their racism exposed and losing money and losing patronage. And rather than fix that racism, they'd rather elect people who can prevent it from coming to light. And who suffers under that type of regime? Not them. We do. Because we need to vote in record numbers. That is the only way that we can engage in this democracy. That is the system. That is the game that we are all playing, for better or worse. Now, my hope in my heart of hearts is that maybe <laughs> Joe Biden might not run. <laughs> Anything can happen. So maybe he'll step down. Maybe someone else will, who knows? And we'll have a candidate that inspires us and makes us excited to vote. You know, it might, it might not be the candidate that, that we all want, but it's, it may not be a, a vote cast with a heavy heart, which I fear is going to be the reality for a lot of people, no matter what, on both sides of the aisle. But as I mentioned today, I want to implore you to not lose faith in the vote. because That's our only voice. And now you know what happens when we don't use it. Now, as always, you're free to disagree with me. And if you do, feel free to do so on my social media. You can hit me at Ramsey's Job. Of course, you can always use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. Let's talk about it. And until we do, peace. This has been a production of the Black Information Network. Today's show is produced by Chris Thompson. Have some thoughts you'd like to share? Use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. While you're there, be sure to hit subscribe and download all of our episodes. I am your host, Ramses Ja, on all social media. Join us tomorrow as we share our news with our voice from our perspective.
right here on the Black Information Network Daily Podcast. I got one more day, I'm gonna talk to you.